Hello, you're watching the Film Fruit channel in partnership with Analog Wonderland. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the huge variety of film that is available and the differences between them all. And I'll be touching on color, slide, red scale, and black and white. And all the film that's featured in this video is available to purchase through Analog Wonderland. And with that being said, we'll start where it all began with black and white. The classic of film photography where it all began with the likes of George Eastman at the forefront of putting it on the market. From Ansel Adams to Diane Ardbus, black and white film has been the staple of analog photography. There is a huge choice to pick when it comes to black and white film and these are my tips on what to choose. If you're planning to shoot on a bright sunny day, you can go really, really low with ISO. Say anything from 12, even lower, but up to 200 ISO. 400 is the standard, pretty much with most films, and can be pushed and pulled. The ISO affects the density of the photographs too. So lower the ISO, the more contrast you'll get. And the higher the ISO, the more detail you'll get. For you beginners watching, I suggest that you check out Fima Lomography and Japan Camera Hunter's very own brand, JCH Street Band Film. These brands have a great selection. With Fima, you got the classic, creative, and action stocks. Lomography have their Earl and Lady Grey. Then you got Japan Camera Hunter's very own film stock which is obviously worth checking out for those who are a little bit more savvy i would suggest checking out roly ilford adox cinestill and kodak ilford is popular with professionals with their stocks such as fp4 which is great for weather conditions like fog and overcast as it produces higher contrast whereas hp5 is a low contrast film and is more suitable for sunnier days along with those there is their delta variations as well Rolly has a huge range of black and white films, including infrared, which is perfect for landscape photography. Alux 2 has a great range available, including a super low 12 ISO film, which is definitely worth checking out. Sinisaw has a single black and white film stock available, which is perfect for recreating film and wild style photographs. And of course, you got it where it all started, Kodak, who have just brought back the beloved T-Max 3200, so get that while it's hot. Now let's move on to colour film. Colour negative is the typical standard of film photography. Developed in C41, it's the more commercial and common medium of analogue photography. ISO again plays a big factor on how your photographs will turn out. The lower you go, the more contrast and grain you'll get, the higher you will get more detail and sharpness. You are spoilt for choice when it comes to picking a colour film and I know as a beginner it can be very daunting to do so. So here are my suggestions and personal favourites to choose from. Lomography's colour negative is a firm favourite with many photographers including myself. You've got a huge choice of ISOs to pick from, all of which produce a lovely colour. Plus a free pack of these films is super affordable. Kodak Portra is a huge favourite with photographers, in particular with the pros as well. A little bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for, and that is a high quality image. Cinesaw Daylight 50 and Tungsten 800 are a firm favourite with myself. These are perfect for creating your own movie style stills. Now for something completely different. Revlog, one of my absolute favourite brands ever, have a great range to pick from. Pick either 600 or 460 nm for trippy colour shifts. Colours so you can get those lush washes of colour all over your photographs. Then you've got stocks such as Cosmos and Volvox, which add a cool effect on your photographs as well. Any of these suggestions will see you well, so pick up some colour film and get shooting. Now, Red Scout was actually discovered by accident. It's where you shoot on a colour negative but on the wrong side. It's worth overexposing by one or two stops. I've actually gotten hints of blue from underexposing too. With development, it's the same as colour film, you just develop in C41. Kono Watwild is a brilliant film and a favourite of mine. You can get a free pack so you're nicely stocked up for a photo adventure. Rolly also has their own red scale film called Red Bird which produces lovely tones of orange and red. Red scale is definitely a type of film that's worth playing with, especially with the hot summer days coming up so get yourself stocked up on some. Slide film in simple terms is the opposite to colour negative film. 
Instead, you get a positive. In fact, when the film is developed, you get a little photo. So if you're my age or older, you might remember slideshows at school. However, the benefits of shooting on slide film are so vast, such as crisper colors and longer archival life. Now, I've actually got these slides from a project I've been working on over the last couple of years. And with modern day scanning, the quality of the images still come out super high. Now when it comes to developing slide film, you don't use C41, you use E6. But don't despair if your lab does not offer E6 processing, because that means you can venture into the world of cross processing. And with cross processing, you get crazy color shifts and visual delights. That's why you get your slide film processed in C41. Now Fujifilm is your port of call when it comes to slide film. In my own experience, when cross-processed, Valvia has produced results of high contrast greens and Provia has given me super hot pinks. Different ISOs can yield different outcomes, so it's worth experimenting with these stocks and cross-processing. If you decide to go for an E6 development, you stand to get sharp and cool colours just like in these photographs right here. Maybe even buy yourself a slide machine from a charity shop or of eBay and be a bit old school and showcase your photographs that way. I hope you feel a little bit more inspired from these recommendations and if you have any questions about any particular film stocks, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the lovely folks at Analog Wonderland. And make sure that you're following them on Instagram as well as the Film Freak Instagram as well so you can keep up to date in what we're doing. With that, thank you very much for watching and make sure you're subscribed for more videos coming very, very soon from basics to the experimental stuff. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!